you are listening to the ATS Antidote Show. And now, your host, Bob Lennon. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brock Lavalli, I am the Atheist Antidote, thank you for listening to my podcast, feel free to venture beyond this to my social media platforms and venues, you will be pleasantly surprised, I also have close to a hundred YouTube videos spanning the breadth and depth of topics that you want to listen to and more importantly share with your friends in fighting back against secular extremism. How many of you have read or watched one of the films in the Hunger Games series. I happen to like it. Now, I stumbled butt backwards into this series because I was talking to this young girl at church. This is a little more than a year ago now, maybe even a year and a half ago. She was going on and on and on about these books that she just could not put down. In fact, she wanted to skip something that the church was doing just to go home and continue reading. That's how into these books she was. And I was peppering her with soft questions and she was like, you know, really captivating my attention with these, you know, real, you know, basic frames of the story, which is these different... You know, I don't know how much you know about it. It's really, really populous at this point. But there's these different, you know, outlays of society, and there's a capital, and ultimately, the story moves closer and closer to this revolution that takes place. And there's an, there's an exciting storyline with an arena of kids that are chosen from these different outlying places. But I don't want to give too much of it away. But for those of you who have seen it or have seen the film, what you do know is that there is a huge insulated capital parasitic in a lot of ways and they have orchestrated Pan Am is the place in such a way that they are really in the lap of luxury and they are leeching off of all these different outposts that they have strategically positioned for their livelihood, but not just their livelihood, but their elaborate, plush, extravagant lifestyles. But of course, they've only ever known they are in the right circles of the right stuff, of the right class, possibly just born in the right geographic place. This house of cards is, is delicately in place, and it's it's kept in place by fear, manipulation, lies, and, and force, and blood, and violence. Now, what is interesting is, there's an article that was written called, How Long Will America Allow Washington to Remain in Their Bubble? And I've long known this because I have a friend, of a, a friend who's a firefighter, he's a good friend of mine, a childhood friend of mine, and he works as a firefighter in the Washington, D.C. area, in the larger uh, D.C. area. And he says to me, listen, you'd never know. You'd never know there was an economic problem while living in this area. Things are vibrant, stores, and, and every, you know, everything is fine tax base is solid, economic vibrancy, you have wealth creation like crazy, insulated, insulated from the nation's problems. Some might say insulated from the leadership's poor decision, poor leadership, poor implementation, poor legislation of power, but they're not feeling it, which would only embolden them, right, to continue and continue and continue. As the trains fall further and further off the tracks, they don't even know it. They don't feel the turbulence, right? They're insulated. They're in Pan Am. They're in the capital of Pan Am. And they're eating the finest of foods. And they're... Well, they're all connected, right? They're all... They all got each other's back. They got the the massive tax base pouring endless gold and treasury into the capital. Meanwhile, the consequences are hitting... 
the rest of the country, keeping with our analogy, the rest of the territories of Pan Am, very, very badly. People are hungry. People are starving. People are hurting. Homes and the abuse of power that is put in place, the infrastructure of power that's put in place to keep this whole house of cards is becoming more and more abusive, more and more corrupt, more and more audacious. Well, in the story of the Hunger Games, in that series, what happens is a leader, of course, arises in the most unexpected of places, and they they revolutionize. It just gets too much. Strange how much that parallels today. We're a very rich country. We're a wealthy country. And the momentum of that wealth, I think, can dull our senses to what's happening around us. What's happening around us is the decisions that the elites are making in Washington are not felt by the elites in Washington. History is ripe with examples. Horrible, horrible examples of what happens when that is allowed to compound and compound and compound. People die. Millions of people die. Best case scenario, you have a change of leadership, much more selfless, steps up, leads a country to see the best of themselves, mends the divisions that are always going to be there in a free society. But turns the attention of its citizens towards fixing those problems rather than exacerbating them and using that division and that hurt and that pain for power. Unfortunately, we don't have such leadership and the chance for such leadership slipped through our fingers. So now we're stuck with President Obama Snow. I don't know if you read book two or three, but it's not a good outcome. Thank you for listening to the Atheist Antidote. You are listening to the Atheist Antidote Show.